Hey everybody, I'm Jess and welcome to the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. Our goal here is to help you make boutique style professional looking bags on your domestic sewing machine. And today to continue your bag making education, Audra, our content and marketing producer is going to share edge finishing tips. You may have seen designer bags with those super smooth, shiny edges and wonder how they do that. Today, we're gonna to show you how to create those beautiful finishes on your handmade bag projects. We are going to be using Feebing's Edge Coat products today in our tutorial. Feebing's is another Wisconsin-based company that we are super proud to support. We carry a large variety of Edge Coat colors here at Sally Tomato, as well as the tools for application. You can easily find links to all the items mentioned in this video in the description below. Don't be intimidated. It only takes a few extra steps and it's a little bit more planning to take your bag making to new heights. So I know that this tutorial has been long asked for on our channel, so I'm really excited to dive in. Let's start by going over all the supplies that we need. You will want to have a Feebing's Edge Coat Roller Pen, Gum Tragacanth, and your preferred edge coat finishing color, a protected work surface, a toothbrush, which we will use to clean our roller pen, fine sandpaper, today we are using 220 grit to smooth out any rough edges, and paper towels. We also have a pair of Sally Tomato scissors here with us to clean up any rough edges. So gum tragacanth is used as a base coat, which we will talk more about shortly. We have three layers of base coat color without gum tragacanth and you can see one layer of color, two layers of color, and three layers of color. It still looks beautiful on your edge finish. It pops great off of our beige faux leather, but you can see it's just not super shiny, but it still has a nice edge finish to it. And then we will also show you, which we'll get into here in our demonstration, is three colors showing a base coat of gum tragacanth. So there's three coats of gum tragacanth on these samples. This one here is one coat of color, middle is two coats of color, and then here on my left is three coats of base color. And you can kind of see yeah, that, there's that shiny difference. difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So really there isn't a whole lot that we need to get started. So now we're ready to dive into the application. Perfect. All right, so I have a sample here that we have done absolutely nothing with other than sewing two scrap pieces of faux leather together so we can test and play. The very first thing we're gonna do is clean up our edges. Just clean up any extra that you don't want sealed in by a beautiful finish. Just making sure that I've got some of those edges nice. So it's probably a good idea to flip it to the back side too, just to make sure both edges are yeah. even. Yeah, absolutely. And we're using a little scrap of faux leather. It's gonna be different on your finished bag, which we'll talk about when we get into a little bit later, we'll talk about planning. Because as we know as bag makers, there's lots of little pieces and then when you finish and when you don't finish is definitely important. Mm -hmm. Gum tragacanth may or may not be super apparent once you apply it. You can see there is no finishing on this edge. This piece has actually has three coats of gum tragacanth on it. And if you look, it's really, really negligible to mm -hmm. be able to tell. When you are planning your bag, labels are your friend. We're gonna have our gum tragacanth out and ready. This will dry clear, as you just saw. So don't be too worried. You don't wanna be sloppy, but you don't need to get too concerned if it kind of gets on the material itself. You just kind of want to wipe it off. And for that reason, I'm gonna have a little piece of paper towel at the ready so I can wipe off whatever I need and also a good place to set my roller pen. I'm just gonna dip this in. You can barely see anything on there and I'm just gonna start to roll it. And it's really easy to see where you've applied. It kind of just looks like a wet towel versus mm -hmm. a dry towel. And you just kind of dip and you roll. And then once your roller pen starts to match as much, you don't need a lot. It's just a little bit. And this first coat I have found will dry the fastest because it just soaks right into the material. So we're just gonna do this. You can see like it just goes really fast. Now, the trick is just the patience of the process because you have to do a coat and let it dry and a coat and let it dry. So you definitely want to plan in your time accordingly. So you can see this is how easy it is to 
rub it on. And, and I'll just kind of set it down and just let it, let it dry. If you're, if you're worried about it touching something, I was even setting it on top of the bottles, but it's that simple to apply the gum track can't. And then you're gonna do a coat and let it dry. And then if you want to, you can sand. If you see any bumps that need to be worked out, now's the time to do it. You're gonna sand those edges down and then do the next coat. Because once we start to apply color, it's set in. You can't really like fix it at that point. So thankfully with our faux leather, those edges end up pretty smooth most of the time. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to be too gentle, but you don't need to be too firm either. You're not really, you're not sanding a piece of wood, but you're not sanding anything too fragile either. You'll feel how smooth it is. If you feel that you need to add another coat of gum tragacanth more than the three we did, more power to you. It's whatever you want to have that finished look. Everyone has a different idea in mind of what they want their finished edge to look like. So I didn't need to do too much sanding, but it depends on what material you're finishing. I am gonna wipe off my roller pen. At this point, I would probably go rinse it off in the sink, but for the sake of this tutorial, I think we're okay just to wipe it off for this this moment and I will give it a really good wash with my toothbrush when we're done. We're gonna let this little guy continue to dry. I have some samples ready here that have three coats ready to have color applied to them. So we have our beige Sally Tomato faux leather. I have picked brown and I have picked brown just because I love contrast, that's mm -hmm. just me. Um, plus it's easier for you guys to see what we're doing. So I'm gonna shake this up just to make sure, you know, it's been sitting for a little bit, just to make sure there's nothing sitting anywhere. Hold this very similarly to how I did when we were applying the gum track again. Dip my roller pin in, except now you can actually see how much is on there. And I'm just gonna start to roll it ever so gently on the edge of this sample. It looks so nice already. No, yeah. it's, it's pretty amazing how nicely it goes on. And one thing to note, I like to paint, you know, and you know, use some paints that kind of like stick on you and you can't get off. This is very similar to like any paint that's easy to get off your skin. It's very easy to get off your skin and nails. So don't worry if you've got a beautiful manicure or you've got a piece of jewelry on, it will come off very easily. I wouldn't be messy with it, but don't okay. worry about it either. That's good to know. Yeah. You want to give it a shot? Sure. All right. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit more paint yeah. on and it adds a little bit of shine. Yeah. And that will dull as it dries. So it looks really shiny when you first apply it, mm -hmm. but then that will dull. But again, as you continue to add coats, it will get shinier and shinier. Oh, this is super easy. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna let this one dry. And again, this is usually the point where I would go wash this off. That will just wait until we're done. So as we showed earlier, you'll see how those coats build up. So we just applied that first coat. And then as we apply the second coat and the third coat, you will see how that shininess really builds up. The other thing you can do, which is why I have this little cloth here is you can always just like take a nice clean, like soft cloth, it's just a microfiber cloth I have at home and just kind of buff up that edge. And that'll also bring that shine up a notch. So just like you mentioned before, you can really go as far with this as you want mm -hmm. or just keep it simple and add the coats of the paint on and your bag has that professional edge to it. Yeah, absolutely. Don't worry as you're doing this about getting it on any of your Sally Tomato hardware. It will come right off with a little scrape of your fingernail. So if you're putting it on and you know you just get a little bit on there, don't fret. It's not a problem at all. If you have it on your faux leather, we can just scrape it off with a wet paper towel and kind of our fingernail. You're going to want to be, if you have a lighter color faux leather or material, you're going to make sure, try not to get it in the threads at all but you can just kind of scrape and you kind of scrape away from the edge here and you can kind of see how it just will clean up nicely along that edge. And again, it just kind of mm -hmm. cleans that right up. Yeah, this is a really good tip if you're using a contrasting paint color with yeah. your fabric, yep. but if you're using a matching color, then you really wouldn't have to worry about cleaning up those edges. Not at all, not at all. So again, if it gets on there, Again, don't fret, just like the hardware, you can just kind of scrape it right off with a little bit of little fingernail scratch and some water. That is so easy. 
An additional few quick notes about Edge Coat. So Edge Coat is water resistant, but it's not waterproof. Also, similarly, whenever we make our bags, it is subject to general wear and tear. So we will finish our edges and they will look beautiful, but we've all had that wallet that we bought at the store that we've opened and closed a thousand times and those edges kind of start to wear down. So that is completely normal. We have our finished samples here that you've seen a couple times now, and you can see it's bendable. It flexes with straps, wallets, bag flaps. It'll bend and do what you want it to do. And that's what's unique about this edge coat paint yeah. too. It does have that flexibility to it for your projects. We have a couple other ones to show you here. Like we've done it on our cork and you can see we did it in matching black and it looks really nice. It still bends just like the faux leather does. Also, we did try it on our Sally Tomato Micro Suede. It wasn't our favorite application. Mm -hmm. It still gives it a little shine. It makes the edges a little bit harder than we would like. And also, once you get it on to the material, you really can't wipe it off. So it can be done. We tested it but wasn't our favorite application of it. It's always good to try and then you know, yeah. but definitely recommend for the faux leather and the cork. It looks great. Yeah, absolutely. We also did try it on our laser cut Lucky Penny kit. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a Sally Tomato customer, you know we do have laser cut kits and we wanted to test it on those laser cut edges because those edges will act differently than the yes. natural edge when you cut it. And you can see here that it still gives a shiny, beautiful edge, but the edges don't mesh together like they do on our other materials. Yeah, the gum definitely helps bond those fibers along the edges to look like one seamless piece of fabric. Mm -hmm. And we did do three coats of gum on here and three coats of color, but because those edges are burned when we cut the kits, it just doesn't necessarily all like gel like we probably would like. But so if you do buy any of our laser cut kits and you finish the edges and it doesn't necessarily look like some of the other ones we've shown you here, it's just because of that laser cut edge. It's nothing you're doing wrong. It's just how those edges are and how they respond to the color and the base coat. So I'd like to summarize this with our top five tips for finishing the edges of your projects. First of all, start small. Pick a simple project and set yourself up for success so that way you don't end up being frustrated if you choose a bigger project. Next, we recommend to plan ahead. Make sure that you know what pieces you want to finish. So during the project construction, you might want to read ahead and decide are there certain pieces that need to have that edge coat before you attach them to your project or can it wait till after assembly? Our next tip is to be patient. Let it dry between the coats and don't forget to rinse off your roller pen between the coats. The reason we say to rinse off the roller pen between coats is as you can see, it rolls. And sometimes as that paint gets in there, it might get in under here, it might get in under here. And you can see it kind of builds up in between those little ridges. So we wanna keep that nice and clean so it spins nicely in application. As you can see, what am I gonna be doing? I'm gonna be able to clean this when we are done. And that's where that toothbrush really comes in handy to Absolutely. get into those grooves. Absolutely. Our next tip is to go slow. There's no reason to rush this application process. It can be pretty relaxing yeah. and fun to just enjoy painting the edges of your bag. And our last tip is to give yourself grace. Know that just like learning to make bags, skill building takes time. So don't expect perfection on your first application. Keep trying and your application will improve over time. We tend to be our worst critics and just know your friends are gonna be very impressed by your projects that you create. We hope that you give edge finishing a try and add this new creative element into your bag making. Check out our video on mixing edge coat paint colors for additional inspiration and tips for working on your projects. And if you do decide to try edge coating, we would love to see, so please share and show off your finished edges of your Sally Tomato projects. Use the hashtag Sally Tomato on social media so we can see it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. See you next time. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on future videos.